In the Cinecom video that I've linked below, he shows how to use something known as reverse stabilization to apply an effect to a moving object in the video. I wanted to show briefly how I made the same effect using Fusion 16 and the Mocha Pro plugin. I will use the same stock footage of a woman running that Cinecom uses. The goal here is to apply an effect to her face, which will track with the face moving. The end result is this somewhat goofy looking effect. To begin with, I will pull in a loader node and bring in the footage of the woman jogging. As we can see from this, this is the same stock footage that Cinecom started with. In order to track, I will add a Mocha Pro node and launch the Mocha UI. We can use the tracker in Mocha to draw just outside of the region we want to track. This is a little different than some other planar trackers. They do really want a bit of an edge, and it only tracks within this box. We check that we have translation scale, rotation, and shear, which should be good, and 90% it's fine for this size, and then we'll hit track. And I will be back when this finishes. All right, I'm going to stop this because it doesn't look like it's actually doing a very good job. You notice at the beginning here, we're tracked just a bit past the edge of her face. And by the time we get to the inside, the end, we're actually off the edge of her face. I think the problem here is we have too much stuff outside of her face that's causing a little bit of confusion to the tracker. So what I'm going to do is pull this in so we don't track any of these features outside of her face. We just grab the eyes, nose, and part of the mouth even. Let's try this again. I think this tracked a whole lot better. We can kind of check by using this quick stabilize and just playing the video and watching the face. There's a little bit of rotation happening. Um, actually, the quick stabilizer doesn't appear to be correcting for rotation, so it otherwise looks pretty good. So in order to use this, I'm going to use the stabilize node, make sure that I've selected x, y, rotation, and zoom, because the camera distance does change, and therefore her face We'll change size a little bit, and we want to turn on this maximum smoothing. Normally, with the stabilizer, you want some smoothing to avoid sudden movements that exactly track the image you're tracking. But in this case, since we're stabilizing in order to apply an effect, we need it to be maximally smoothed. And if you play this, you'll notice her face is very solid, and the background kind of wildly gyrates. At this point, we will export the tracking data as a Fusion composition and exit Mocha. From within Fusion, and notice I double-click twice, once to select this and another time to deselect all the nodes, I will insert my tracker, do the same kind of click dance to get rid of the unneeded extra loader, and then I will feed my input into both the foreground and background of the tracker. Um, the reason is because the tracker uses the background image to determine the size of the output. From within the tracker, we can say we want a corner positioner, foreground over background. And if we preview this, we'll see the same kind of effect we did before, along with some garbage left over on the edges. In order to undo the effect, we want to make a copy of our tracker. And for the background, we want to feed in our original video. I'll show you why in a second. We need, and then the output of this goes into the background of this, the foreground of this tracker. Within the tracker, I'm going to change this then to Perspective Positioner, which is the reverse effect from the Corner Positioner. And if we 
just look at a few key places here. We'll notice this looks a lot like our original video. Now, there's actually some stuff happening wherever there is an edge. The scaled image is scaled down here, and this is being placed over this. It's possible to get some effects here, and if that was to be a problem, it might be a good idea to impose some kind of mask over the tracked area and to only replace the image in that position. You would put a merge node here and mask off the area you care about. For this video, it doesn't seem to really be causing any kind of an effect, so I'm, I'm happy with this. Now for our effect. What we want to do is a transform. And just a little note that coming from the other video, you'll notice that After Effects has lots of little effects, th things called magnify. And Fusion is a bit more of a building block type approach, and it will probably take us a couple nodes to create the same kind of an effect. If we go into transform, on the little heads up display, you'll notice there's this red reticule that I can adjust the transform itself. And there's a green one which indicates the pivot point. And I haven't looked up how to move the pivot point from the UI, but it does work to just move it inside of these little windows here. So what I'm going for is to position this effect directly over the center of her eye. And at this point, we can zoom in a little bit so we can really see what's going on. Make sure we get this positioned accurately. Now when we use the size effect, at least if we're looking at our effect, this size will resize the image centered about the woman's left eye. So I'm going to pick about you know, 1.38, seems like a good idea. What we need to do is now mask this appropriately for the woman's eye. The way I'll do that is by creating an ellipse, again, centered over the woman's eye. Scale down so that we get her new big eye over the top of her old eye. Lastly, we want to increase the soft edge just a little bit so that this blends in nicely with the image. So that's our effect. And nicely, if we look, well, that would be our effect if we were viewing it. Lastly, we need to merge this in to the video, to the stream, which I will do with a merge node. We'll take the output of our transform as the input to the merge. And now we should have this warped view of her eye magnified over the other one. And because the image is stabilized coming into the transform, the merge, the mask, the eye is always in the same place. So this image will look much more mundane. The reverse tracker then undoes this movement, putting her eye back where it was originally. To do the other eye, I'm just going to copy and paste the three of these in. Feed this input in here. And then for the transformation, I will move the center point, the pivot, on top of the other eye. Then I will also move the ellipse itself for the mask to be on top of the other eye. And if we look at the output of that, 
We should have both eyes magnified. We don't. Um, which is fascinating how that's happening. What I'm going to do is detach this mask from the transform itself and apply it to the merge. We really want to be masking what's merged in, not the part of the image that is transformed. So at this point, we have video of the woman with great big eyes. And if we look at the unmodified output, we have the woman jogging with her eyes in the right place, but giant. For our last little bit of fun to the effect, let's give her a giant smile. To do this, I will use a loader. to bring in an image of a smile. In this case, we do want to mask the smile itself. And I will do that with a, with a, a Bezier node. which we don't need that many of them. We'll pick some points, kind of. Trying to get the essence of this woman's smile without too much of the rest of her face. Hooking this up to the mask on this gives us a smile. Can do a bit of a soft edge to feather that down a bit. Maybe pull in a little bit less of the corner, but this actually looks pretty good. One thing I will say right up front, we will need to color grade this. Most likely just by dropping just a little bit on the gain. Then use another merge node. To merge the smile into our image, which gives us this lovely, bizarre Cheshire cat effect. So in order for that to be useful or interesting looking, we then have to adjust the merge itself so that the smile is in the right place. Try to get it to match up with what a maybe a realistic smile light might look like. But obviously, this isn't very realistic because it's not even facing the same direction. As you can see from this, we need to remove a little bit of our original as we're pulling in some kind of darker areas a little bit above her smile. But the end result is a really weirdly positioned smile. Very obviously fake planted on the jogger. This tracks well because the face isn't moving. And if we look at the final image, we have our woman with bug eyes and a really unrealistic smile enjoying a nice jog. Just as a little bit of last minute fine tuning, we can adjust the color corrector to 
get a really good match on that. And I think I need to make this soft edge just a little bit softer to get rid of that hard line we have there. And there we have our bug-eyed woman running. To finish, I will add a saver node. Connect this up to our final output. And we can render our final video.